couple seconds for the sound to get up because it's okay. So you were saying about how you do these. Well, I start with a lot of texture, so I'll build it up with gesso and sand, let it dry so it's like a pebbly surface, mm -hmm. which I like better than a flat surface. It reminds me more of nature. It's more random. There's something tactile about it. And what it also does is when paint either drips or splatters or pours, it catches onto the texture and creates a natural sort of break in the paint, which I couldn't do if I did it just with a little brush trying to sort of simulate nature. So creating a, a natural sort of event is how I paint. And then I just build up colors, take them off with, usually I'll spray off some colors that are still wet, leaving backgrounds showing through, so it's multiple layers. And I try to organize uh, certain patterns. So they start repeating or light and dark. Usually there's a darkness coming up around, sort of vignetting the center and building up more of a, a almost like a natural scene without it being uh, inspired by any particular scene. So I create my own natural spaces, which then I, I just enjoy them. So it sounds like it evolves over time. How long would uh, this one have taken to do? Uh, it, it goes fast and slow. Sometimes it goes quite fast where things work, but here it obviously was a painting underneath, which I, I wanted to break up with a, a, a surface that mm -hmm. sort of united the, maybe it was too f sort of separated, so I'll use yellow to blend it together. So it might take a couple of days, maybe three days. It might take a week changing, you know, so it keeps changing, but the application is fast. Would you have been working on this one by, its, by itself, or would you have been working on uh, you mothers? You should work on one at a time. One at a time? And that's maybe why they're quite varied. Yeah. There's almost, I could try to repeat one, but it never works. So. And, and same with the larger paintings, it's the same technique. Some of them are built up with um, splatters, mm -hmm. like the, the big paintings over there. Right. So what's the first question people ask you when they look at you or your paintings? And oh, sometimes they ask, how do you do it? And sometimes, what is it? What is it? And then usually they, before I say anything, they tell me what it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see this in it. Oh, I see a person. Or I see a face, and then I'm like, oh, please don't see a face, because once you see a face, you can't see anything. Really? I hadn't yeah. thought of that. That's interesting. One person bought a painting, and then he brought it home. And then he was kind of irritated and annoyed. And he had to get the framer to frame it upside down. Did it work to make the him? face go away? Yeah. Or, yeah. So uh, I didn't ever see the face, but everybody sees things. Yeah. So I see no tags with names. Did the paintings have names, or yeah, do you it, issue that? The reason I, I didn't put names, first of all, the names are more to identify the pictures for me. Right. So they're usually by color. And also it allows a person to look at it without even, like it almost forces them to think, well, then what is it? Because usually you can look at a name and get an idea. Right. But yes. I, didn't, I, I don't think that's fun. That would be more fun for them to sort of ponder and wonder we'll what out. the heck that yeah. is. Yeah. So I'll have... A few of them sort of make sense, like seeking space was the first one. There, it's just words that come to me after I finish painting. Okay. Yep. And then there's yellow flame. That's about the most literal. <laughs> and then I'll know which one it is. And then orange or warm yellow veil or veils. Sometimes they have the same name over years, you know. So I have to look at the year I made it in. Mm -hmm. and it's kind of... So this technique... No, you've been doing this for a number of years, I think. Yeah, this, um, I did my first paintings like this probably in the mid-90s. And that was a result after doing uh, expressionism, like a lot of gestural work, almost like, um, like Chinese big writing and spiders. Right. Okay. And then I just thought it was just too busy and too too much emotion, too... That's too busy. <laughs> now look at these. Yeah, this is busy, but busy in a, a different, different way. way. Okay. Yeah. So the others were too... Almost too gestural. I like it when it's soft. I like all over busy, but kind of like a buzz more than 
the vein. Okay. okay. I can definitely get that from what you what you have on display here. It's uh, it's very dense with I don't know, dense with busy or dense with information in some way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was, as I was looking at it, I was thinking about what I was talking about earlier on. It's more dense with data and the information pops up in your head where you try and make sense out of it. Mm -hmm. right? so. yeah. Well, nonsense implies that you can't make sense of it. Mm -hmm. So the feeling side of brain, we'll work on that tomorrow. Okay. Because that's what every, that's what the exercise is, is we stay with the feeling side of the brain mm -hmm. and that's not the intellectual side. And when, once you start seeing the difference and you actually start enjoying being in that feeling side of the brain, right. and you get something out of it, then uh, you kind of want to be there more often. Mm -hmm. Most, you know, we've been trained in the culture to uh, think of everything you know, as a word, like a tree. Mm -hmm. Flower, an apple, and we get these symbols in our mind, and we're working on that. We're not working on the feeling side of the brain, we're thinking symbolically. Right. So we're trying to, and that's good, it's good to communicate, it's like a language. We're dealing with the symbols and not the actual object, yeah. the treeness. The treeness of it, yeah. yeah, exactly. And then, and now kids are so separated from nature, a lot of them never see a cow in a young life or a field of dirt or squish a worm like they don't have that feeling right. of memory so they have you know the digital memory of what they see on tv and it's sensational but it's not quite the same kind of sensation okay so how many of these workshops have you this done? is pretty well in this way this yeah. is the first okay in this way i've done them without paintings i've done workshops with uh, in schools for attention development and we did some painting but it wasn't in this type of environment mm -hmm. this is quite this is why you're here <laughs> oh, I, see. Okay. I think it I think it, I can build on this and maybe start bringing it into galleries more to if it works the way I'm hoping tomorrow people get something out of it. because I think what happens with galleries people come in and especially if there's abstract work that they can't relate to or they feel odd about or they don't like it. It's sometimes they just come and they go and then they say, well, I didn't like the show. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of a bit of a wasted experience because mm -hmm. they spent the time coming. So if they could get way more out of it and go away enriched, then right. they could uh, use that for uh, just grow, growing and understanding the art, art and the public is in, in a lot of cases uh, being there's no bridge between them anymore. You go to New York and you see the work, and it's so shocking, and you wonder, well, how come I can't relate to that, or it's so bizarre, and I can't relate, and you walk away and think, oh, you mm -hmm. go back home to my landscapes and right. <laughs> things yeah. I understand. So I'm trying to bridge that, that uh, sensitivity that is needed to uh, enjoy art. Okay. Not all artists. I'd be not very. Uh, I'd be a bit pretentious if I said, "Come and enjoy my art." I just do what I do. <laughs> some enjoy it, some won't. Come and experience your and, um, art. Yeah. I never want anyone to to be forced to experience something unpleasant. That would be nice. But it, as an artist, it's hard to create things that people enjoy. Right. It, it's almost impossible. If you can, just a little bit for a few people at least. At least there's a handful of people. Okay.